up first here, one in 10 households in Eurozone population centers now own cryptocurrency. On Tuesday, the European Central Bank, ECB, published the results of a new survey conducted in six Eurozone areas, the Netherlands, Spain, Italy, Belgium, France, and Germany. According to the survey, approximately 10% of respondents from the surveyed countries said they own cryptocurrencies. Out of this group, only 6% of respondents said they own digital assets worth more than 30,000 euros. Meanwhile, 37% of respondents said they owned up to 999 euros in crypto. Among all the countries surveyed, investors in the fifth income group, or the wealthiest 20% of the population, had the highest ownership of cryptocurrencies compared to other income groups. The Consumer Expectation Survey asked adults age 18 to 70 if they or anyone in their household owned financial assets in various categories, such as crypto assets. The ECB's new report highlights the growing trend of crypto asset adoption, despite the inherent risks. Citing a recent survey from Fidelity, the report notes that 56% of respondents said they had some exposure to crypto assets, up from 45% in 2020. <clears throat> The availability of crypto-based derivatives and securities on regulated exchanges such as futures, exchange-traded notes, exchange-traded funds, and OTC-traded trusts has contributed to the momentum. In addition, increased regulation of digital assets has been seen as a sign that public authorities endorse crypto. For example, the ECB cited Germany allowing institutional funds to invest up to 20% of their holdings in crypto. However, the ECB also noted that if current trends in digital asset adoption continue, they could eventually pose a threat to financial stability. So that's a good sign. I think from my experience and just from research, Europe and other countries outside of the US, a lot of them have been further, like better and um, further adopted crypto than the US has just within their like banking sector, which I mean, that's, can be good or bad depending on what you want. Um, you know, some people want crypto away from banking. Some people think it should be infiltrated into it. So that's just something to note. Up next here, Web3 no longer is just about crypto and DeFi, says Polkadot founder Gavin Wood. Gavin Wood, founder of Polkadot, believes that the application and utility of Web3 extends far beyond the blockchain community, despite the recent buzz surrounding the term. In an interview with Cointelegraph at the World Economic Forum's annual meeting in Davos, Switzerland, Wood talked about Web3 applications and whether the all-encompassing concept needed to evolve past its current usage. <clears throat> Wood said that he doesn't think Web3 needs to evolve, really, from its origins too much yet, but maybe in the future it will. Wood went on to explain the merits of the technology, saying that the key point is that you don't have to rely on trust. You don't have to hope that the service you're using is working correctly or that your data is safe from hacking. When discussing the advantages of Web3, Wood explained that the term's rise in popularity is encouraging because it means that people are seeing the technology's potential to be used in different applications. <clears throat> Cointelegraph has a tweet out here in regards to the mayor of Miami here, Francis Suarez, <clears throat> and uh, the high, his highlight, the need to, to switch perspectives on Bitcoin. He went on to say that we are starting to understand that this is a broad platform that can be used to create new services that Web2 couldn't. Wood has, was asked how he plans to survive the crypto bear market and how other companies can maximize success during periods of sustained downward price action. He said that most of Polkadot was built during the bear market between 2018 and 2021. The numbers don't need to be high to do that. You don't need to raise tens of millions for your white paper to do that. Despite attracting significant capital from venture firms, Web3 projects have only seen a fraction of the funding that other sectors have. According to Cointelegraph, the Web3 gaming and metaverse sectors have only attracted $3 billion in venture capital funding since mid-April, compared to $14.8 billion that was seen in the first quarter of 2022. So it seems like there is a lot more development that could be happening for Web3. Let me know your thoughts on that what you guys think. Uh, Cointelegraph has some tweets um, on this article here in regards to it. Um, yeah, let me know what your guys' thoughts are and um, if you think Web3 is going to be 
the next big thing. Up next here, Mercado Bitcoin partners with Stellar to create MVP for Brazilian CBDC. Brazilian exchange Mercado Bitcoin has announced its partnership with the Stellar Development Foundation, SDF. The company said it intends to develop one of the nine projects selected for the Lyft Challenge Real Digital, promoted by the Central Bank of Brazil. The Lyft Challenge Real Digital is a collaborative environment created by the Central Bank of Brazil, or BASEN, and the National Federation of Associations of Central Bank Servers, FENESBAC. Side note, their names are always so long. I just don't understand. It's like this huge, long name for it. With the announcement of Stellar's integration, SDF will join the consortium created by Mercado Bitcoin to develop solutions for real digital. This consortium also includes CPQD and ClearSale. Danelle Dixon, CEO of Stellar Development, said that Stellar's network is prepared to support Mercado Bitcoin and the Central Bank of Brazil as they explore use cases for the real digital's future. Mercado Bitcoin selected the Stellar network due to the speed, efficiency, and security of the protocol. Rinaldo Rebello, CEO of Mercado Bitcoin, said that by utilizing the Stellar network, they will be able to provide the central bank with a co complete solution for evaluation. The Central Bank of Brazil has selected the DeFi AVE protocol and consensus in partnership with Visa and Microsoft to develop use cases for the nation's real digital currency. The consortium, which also includes Mercado Bitcoin, will explore ways to improve the efficiency and inclusiveness of the Brazilian economy. According to Campos Nitos, the Real Digital Initiative is designed to help people transition to the new digital world. By providing native means of settlement and communication, it aims to make the digital transformation smoother and more efficient. Fabio Araujo, coordinator of the Real Digital Project within the BC, recently stated that the central bank is aiming to allow the construction or interconnection of the national financial system with decentralized finance and with smart contracts. Their goal is to bring more people into the crypto environment by expanding the regulatory perimeter to include things like smart contracts and DeFi technologies. This will allow to reach a wider audience and make crypto more accessible to everyone. So big news, I think, with crypto adoption just happening all over the place. Hopefully this helps the market turn around. Um, you know, things are tanking, but hopefully all of this adoption helps things to slowly go back up. Up next here, crypto funds under management dropped to a low not seen since July of 2021. Digital asset investment products experienced outflows of $141 million during the week ending on May 20th, which reduced total assets under management by institutional funds to $38 billion, the lowest level since July 2021. CoinShares' latest digital asset fund flows report shows that Bitcoin experienced outflows of $154 million during a choppy week of trading between $28,600 and $31,430. Here's the chart, the BTC USDT one day chart from TradingView. Despite um, the recent outflow of BTC, the month to date flow for May remains positive at $187.1 million. The year to date figure for BTC stands at $307 million. Investment products in the multi-asset category saw inflows of $9.7 million last week, bringing the total for the year to $185 million. This represents 5.3% of the total AUM for these products. Multi-asset investment products have seen increased inflows during 2020, with CoinShares attributing this to the higher volatility experience this year. These products are seen as being safer than single asset investment products during periods of volatility and have only experienced outflows in two weeks so far this year. Cardano and Polkadot led the way with the inflows of $1 million each, followed by $700,000 worth of inflows into Ripple and $500,000 into Solana. To date, Ethereum has seen the poorest performance of all assets covered with $44 million in outflows in May and a year-to-date figure of $239 million. The interest in digital asset investment products has declined in recent months, due in part to the strengthening of the US dollar. According to cryptocurrency market intelligence firm Delphi Digital, the dollar has been one of the most important macro factors driving asset prices over the last six months. The dollar index uh, DXY has risen from 95 at the start of 2022 to 102 on May 23rd, a year-to-date gain of 6.8%. 
This is the fastest year-over-year -year change for the DXY in recent history and led to a breakout from the range it had been stuck in for the past seven years. Is the dollar strengthening or are they just printing more money? I don't know. Who knows? The fiat currency, there's always... You know, it does it does a, a impact crypto assets. That's why it's really good to be in up with the news, but take that with a grain of salt. Up next here, Coinbase introduces crypto to Fortune 500 while FTX CEO featured in Time 100. In a significant development for the cryptocurrency industry, Coinbase has become the first crypto and blockchain company to be featured on Fortune 500's list of America's largest companies. That's awesome. The Fortune 500 list ranks the top corporations in the United States by total revenue, percentage profit margins, assets, and at the number of employees. This 68-year-old tradition is synonymous with measuring the success of the leading businesses in the country. Retail giant Walmart has remained in the top spot for the 10th consecutive year with $572,754 million in revenue and a growth of 2.4%. Amazon registered second place with 469,822 uh, and 21.7%, while Apple took third with 365,817 and 33.3%. Coinbase Global was ranked 437th on the list with revenues of 7,839.4 million and 513.7% annual growth. The company has 3,730 employees around the world. In other news, FTX CEO Sam Bankman-Fried has been featured in the most influential people of 2022 by Time Magazine. As an effective altruist and instrumental figure in advancing a positive narrative for the crypto space, Bankman-Fried was nominated by Time correspondent Andrew R. Chow. The 99-year-old magazine noted his use of every tool imaginable to convince the public of the strengths of crypto. Right? Why wouldn't he? A new report documenting Coinbase's financial performance for Q1 2022 shows that the company lost $430 million, the first time it has reported a loss in its public history. Prior to this, Coinbase had reported four quarters of substantial profit. CEO Brian Armstrong remains unfazed by the current market conditions, declaring that these periods of low volume provide the company with an opportunity to focus more intently on product development. This sentiment also extends to Coinbase's publicly traded NASDAQ stock, Coin, which has fallen 82% from its all-time high of $368.90 following the April 2021 initial coin offering to $66.10 at the time of writing. I think that's very smart that they're utilizing this downtime to um, work on product development. Some people are working on accumulation, making sure to bulk up their portfolio so when the bull market takes off, they're in a better position. Um, you know, do what you can do for, you know, to ride out the bear market. And last but not least here, ADDX bags $58 million to reduce minimum private investment by 10X via smart contracts. ADDX, a blockchain and smart contract based digital securities platform from Singapore has raised $58 million from mainstream financial institutions to fund its goal of reducing minimum private investment sizes via tokenization and fractionalization. ADDX, a digital securities exchange regulated by the Monetary Authority of Singapore, aims to democratize private markets. The pre-Series B funding round saw participation from the Stock Exchange of Thailand, UOB, NASDAQ-listed Hamilton Lane, and Thailand's Krung Sri Bank, which has brought total funds raised by ADDX to around $120 million. ADDX makes private investments more accessible by tokenizing them and fractionalizing them using blockchain technology and smart contracts. This allows for smaller minimum investment sizes, making these opportunities available to a wider range of investors. That is very cool. I like that they are, you know, crypto is supposed to be for everyone, regardless of your status, regardless of your wealth. So I think this is a cool thing that they're doing. According to ADDX, the platform effectively brings down private markets minimum investment thresholds from $1 million to $10,000. In addition, as part of the investment, SET becomes entitled to appoint a board member for ADDX. ADDX plans to redirect some of its latest funding to other strategic initiatives such as expanding partnerships with issuers and launching ADDX Advantage, a private market service for wealth managers. The current shareholders of ADDX are SGX, Heliconia Capital, Development Bank of Japan, Japan Investment Corporation, Tokei, Tokyo, Kiat, Nakin, Fatra, and Hanwha Asset Management. 
A recent survey conducted by Independent Reserve, Singapore's first licensed crypto exchange, revealed strong investor support for crypto in the region. This could be key to driving mainstream adoption of crypto in Singapore and beyond. According to Rax Sondi, Managing Director of Independent Reserve Singapore, 58% of those surveyed perceive Bitcoin as an investment asset or store of value. Investors in Singapore are increasingly considering Bitcoin as a real form of money, with 15% of respondents in a recent survey expressing this view. This is up from 60% who saw mass scale adoption of cryptocurrencies in 2021. So that is all we have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, leave a comment on what you want to see in a future video, and we'll see you next time.